this is the unplannable. It's as a business owner, you know, we do continuity planning, we do disaster planning, but at the business level, small business level, none of us would ever think to, you know, do a pandemic plan, right? Um, so the key right now is focus and what and surviving so that we can thrive. I'm going to go through a few slides here. Um, you've seen a lot of these before. If you've been on any of my workshops, you'll, you'll have seen these. These will look really familiar, but these are some, but maybe the meaning of them might change a little bit. So first of all, the team is um, myself, uh, coaches, Sandy Merritt, she's helping me on here, and then Drew Schwegman up in Northern Kentucky. And then our support team is Pooja, um, our marketing coordinator, and then Liz in client care. And they are also helping out today. So for those of you who don't know me, um, real quick, spent 20 years in corporate as a, uh, in the electronics industry, uh, did a lot of roles, started out as a programmer, did, did, did probably 10 different roles in uh, three different companies over, over 20 years. Um, left that in, at the end of 2003 and started coaching with Action Coach in 2004. So um, coming up on my 16 year anniversary here in about, in about two months. And um, I'm a global trainer, which means I train new franchisees. I go to Vegas, um, although in April when I do training, it's gonna be virtual. We're not gonna meet in Vegas. So we're gonna do um, our boot camp online this year or uh, this month and uh, training new franchisees on how to be a great business coach, how to coach businesses, how to run their own business well, and the whole franchise system. Um, I'm also a master coach, which means that I am certified to coach other franchisees. And I have some other franchisees that are clients and I teach them. And I basically teach them how to run their practice, how to help their clients, how to grow their businesses, just like I do with, with many of you. Uh, personal side, my wife, Liz, is um, of uh, 10 years. Um, my daughter, I've got a daughter, Jessica, her husband is Rune, and their job now is to be the keeper of the grandson. Um, so we've got a two-year-old, two-plus-year-old grandson, Augustus, who we saw last Sunday, and that'll be the last time we get to see him in person for a while. Um, we're staying safe. Um, at home, we've got our fur kids, four, the four cats, Scarface, Goldie, Buffy, and, Mid and Midnight. Um, and then my hobbies are bourbon, cigars, and golf, because they all go together. So about today, so keep your cell phones off, keep distractions to a minimum. Doing webinars, can it's really easy to be distracted, okay? We will take a break in about an hour, um, and we will we'll also have at least one breakout where, where we'll talk. So the goal is sharing with and learning from other, you know, other business owners who are feeling the same way. It's all about learning, so make sure you take notes and be present, okay? It's work to be present, but you can do it, I can do it, we're all going to get through. It's a lot easier when we're all in a room together, but um, it's, it's just focus. So, point of power. Many of you know what this is, and what I want to talk about is a little different way to be thinking about it now. So. Point of power is, that's the point where, it's a decision point where you have the power to choose your next behavior, your next response, your next reaction. You can choose, like many, to go below that point. And this crisis has made it hard not to go there. But, it may, but it's even more important not to, and it's more important to go above that point. But blame, excuses, denial. It is easy to blame COVID-19 for everything. It's easy to use that as an excuse, and it's easy to use that as a way to deny that there might be any, any problems in my business independent of COVID-19. So we have to take responsibility. That's just being responsible to do what you know you need to do. Being accountable for results, for outcomes. Being, held, being willing to be held to account. And then ownership, owning it, own your life, own your response to this crisis is the new thing you need to own. Own your job, own your business, own your life, but own your response 
to the crisis. Only you can do that, whether it's in your business life or your personal life. You, only you can own how you choose to respond to this. Only you can be responsible for taking the actions that are different than the actions you, you used to think about taking. But you have to own that. And then blame, excuses, and denial. There's a lot more opportunities to go below that point. You have to avoid that. Powerful is above, powerless is going below that point. So participating. So the only failure is the failure to participate. You give 100%, you get 100% back. Again, new meaning. There's new types of participation we have to do. We have to participate in new ways. We have to participate in figuring out how do we survive this. We have to participate helping our teams, our customers, our communities survive this. We have to participate in that. We are lead, as owners of businesses, we are leaders. We have to lead our teams, our clients, our communities. And then to make sure you get the most out of your learning today and as you go, you got to get rid of the I knows. The I knows, you stop listening. When you think I know, you stop listening, you stop paying attention, and you never know what you're going to miss when you think I know and you stop listening and, and you stop paying attention. So get rid of the I knows. The other, the other thing is, and it comes up in the crisis, just in different situations, you know, the, co the close cousin of I know is that doesn't apply to me. Well, it may not apply to you today, but it might apply to you next week if the situation changes. So you have to get rid of that and think, how could this apply to me? What can I do with this? What can I learn? And then if you want to learn, if you want to survive the crisis, you've got to, you've got to look for opportunities to have fun as well. Because your job as a leader, one of your jobs is to stay calm and to be the calming influence, be the leader, be the calming influence on your team, on your clients, on your families, on your community. Our job as leaders, we have to be the calming influence. Slow it down sometimes. Take a deep breath. Have some fun. Do a game. We're all seeing uh, you know, people coming up with inventive games to play at home to amuse themselves, right? We have to do that for ourselves, our families, our, our teams, our communities, our clients, and we have to help everybody. So fun is part of that, is helping everybody maintain their calm and be relaxed. Hopefully today what you're going to find, what you should expect to find from what I talk about and when we do a breakout, what we let other people talk about, our BFOs, blinding flashes of the obvious. There's a lot of this that really is common sense. Once you calm down and go through the noise of blame excuses and denial, there's a lot of this that's just common sense. Most of my clients that I've talked to in the last two weeks, even the closed ones, I've got several that are just closed, they're done, they're, they're shut down completely. They know what they should be doing. They're just getting caught up in the, oh my God, oh my God, and everybody else is panic, and it's just let it go. You know what to do, put a plan in place and start taking actions. Because this will end. If this doesn't end, it doesn't matter. So we might as well behave and act, assuming it is going to end. And that our business is going to exist, and our customers are going to still exist and still need us. So what we're going to do now is we go do it in a breakout room. We're going to do it for 10 minutes, and Sandy's going to send you a breakout rooms. And when she does that, you're going to get in it. You're going to get a pop up, pop up that says "Join a breakout room." Say yes, and you go into that. We're going to put. Six of you, about six of you in each room. What I want you to talk about and share, each one of you share, what's been your biggest win so far this year? What made it happen? What did you learn from it? 
and make sure everyone gets a chance to talk. They give you about 10 minutes in your breakout room. And just check my timer again. All right, who's gonna jump in? I mean, I'll go first. Please do. I don't mind. So uh, I would say our biggest, or my biggest win for the year is that uh, for the second year in a row, our chamber has won the state chamber's um, awards for not only membership growth, but also retention. And, um, you know, kind of what made that happen is we've just continued to try to set the tone of what, who we are and what we want to be. And I think it's finally starting to pay off for us a little bit. And uh, what do I learn from it? Just to keep going. Um, we compete with about 10 other chambers and business associations in the Louisville area. And we have to continue to be a little bit above them in the way we do programming and what we do. Okay, congratulations. All right, so what we want to talk about. So uh, we got everybody back, looks like. I talk about the five phases that we're all going to go through during this crisis and think about the activities and talk a little bit about the activities that happen in each phase. Now, every business and every client that you have are going to experience these phases in a different order. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to go through this and show you these phases, and then we're going to plan according to these phase, where we are in these phases and plan activities for when we think we will be in each phase because every, every business, every industry is in different places right now and so we want to make we want to make sure that we are working on the right for our industry and for our clients so the first phase is lockdown so on the personal side in lockdown our attention is on our family is my family safe do i know where they are personal care am i taking care of myself what do i need to do to keep myself safe my finances, do I know where my money's at? Have I, am I protecting myself if I have investments? Personal finances, do I, do I have mortgage payments that I know where they're gonna come from or do I need to talk to my mortgage company about and more my bank? What's my mindset? What am I thinking? How am I getting myself back and my thoughts back under control? And then my energy, what am I doing to manage my energy? Am I eating right? Am I still exercising? Yeah, you can't go to the gym, but you know what? There's lots of things you can do without going to the gym. So you gotta manage yourself personally in that lockdown phase. On your business side, in the lockdown phase, things you need to be thinking about, looking after staff, making sure they're safe, making sure they know what's going on. Your business finances, if you've got debt payments, if you've got rent payments, talking to your talking to them, what are the options for maybe skipping skipping a month or deferring a few weeks? Do you have to shut down? I've got I think five clients that basically had to just shut down and deal with that. They had to literally lock down. Apply for government assistance. Now is the time. Get in, get in, apply for the SBA loan. Worry later if you qualify for it. If you don't, that's fine. Get your name in the queue. But also do the learning about what you qualify and what you don't. Kentucky Chamber's putting out lots of things, lots of information, multiple times a day. Um, their website's a great resource. Um, in Louisville, the Greater Louisville Inc. and the St. Matthew's Chamber, Middletown Chamber, Dates. Whatever chamber you're a member of, they are putting out great information and up-to-date resources and links to the government sites that tell you what the rules are. You know, they're, they're going to pass you know, a $2 trillion relief bill that all of us will have an opportunity to participate in one way or another. Not all the rules have been written yet and guidelines, but 
that's something to keep up with every single day. Unemployment. Um, they loosen the rules on unemployment. Apply. You never know. Tell you, you know, if you had to lay off employees, make sure they're known. They know to apply. That's the lockdown phase. Okay, next phase is training. So while, so while you're in that shutdown process, this is a great opportunity for training. For yourself, and, you know, for yourself, it's what skills could you be acquiring now? If your business is in lockdown, what can you, or even slowdown? Some of us aren't in lockdown, but we're in slowdown. So now it's an opportunity to say, hey, well, with a little bit of this time, what can I be learning? What online courses could I do? What books could I read? Could I bring on a coach to help me navigate through this and prepare? But it's self-management. It's decisions. It's getting better at priority, prioritizing, revisiting your priorities on a, on a daily basis because your priorities might need to change every single day. And then making good decisions based on your priorities. On your, on your business side, make sure now's a good time to revisit your vision and mission. Make sure it's up to date. If you don't have one, create it. Your core values. A great time to remind yourself and your team, what are we all about? The crisis doesn't change who you are and what you're all about. It doesn't do that. Look at your product and services. Which ones are still relevant, both now and long term? Which ones are irrelevant short term, but still relevant long term? Which ones are irrelevant now and might be irrelevant for the, for the foreseeable future? Um, you need to review your product and services and make sure that what you're doing is relevant over the next two, three months. And adapt. Restaurants, you know, they had to adapt massively. What they, you know, the ones that rely on people coming in and sitting down at a table for two hours, they had to adapt. That service no longer relevant for maybe a couple months. So adapt. What do you need to adapt to your products and services? Marketing strategies. Now is the time to be looking at marketing strategies. What, what message do you want your clients to be hearing now? Have you pivoted? Well, you need to change your message. So you need to keep marketing, but maybe the message is different. Do you need to educate your clients and prospects on how on why it's still safe to do business with you? So even for you know those in the service industry, like you know, electricians, HVAC, there is, you know, there are going to be there's going to be equipment that breaks down, but there's going to be fear of having you come into their home or their business to fix it. What are you doing to communicate? your plan to make them safe. Collateral preparation, what else do you need to be doing in parallel? What, what materials do you need to be putting together now so that when business does pick up, you're ready? Your marketing collateral, your sales collateral, having all that ready, because if you need to modify it, now's the time to do that while you're waiting to get going full steam again. Some of us that are able to do, we got to do this on the fly, but you have to take some time to do it. And then keep your marketing, keep your drip marketing going. Your email, your newsletters, just change the message and figure out what's the message that my client base and my prospect base wants to hear from me now, needs to hear from me now, about ways I can help them now in addition to the ways I used to be able to help them. So, for example, my marketing, I'm still marketing, but it's changing from, hey, I help people grow, grow fast, to I help people survive, or businesses. But I'm, I'm still coaching, I'm still getting clients, but my message is different. 
not a lot of businesses out there thinking about growing right right this moment, but they're trying. To, they are thinking about how do I survive until I can start growing again. How do I survive until it's time to thrive? Phase three, warming up. That's when we, you know, the curve peaks and we start getting to the point where we can, where we, have, we know when the lockdown's gonna end and we can start getting ready to, to launch. Your default diary, your default calendar, your plan, your mindset on the personal side, being prepared mentally for a sprint. I've got some dental practices and optometry practices. You know, they're basically closed, right? So, but what we need to be, what they need to be doing is one, what training can we do? Is there anybody whose skills we can increase while we're closed? Is there, especially if there's online things that they can be doing? But then now is the time to be thinking about getting our mind ready as leaders of our practices for if you see 50 patients a day and you're closed for 10 days, you've got a 500 patient backlog. Not every single one of them is going to come, going to come back in immediately, but some will. So getting ready for, hey, when we do reopen, there might be a crush. And how are we planning for it? How are we preparing for it? How am I as a leader preparing my mind? Thinking about staff return. Do we bring them all back at once? Or are we gonna open at a limited capacity first? Are we gonna ramp up? What's our plan for ramping up our marketing? Do we go full out first day or do we need to ramp up our marketing slowly? We need to make those decisions. How are we going to differentiate ourselves as we come out of this? Or is our old message still fine? Do we need to, you know, what's our message? So do we have one message while we're shut down, another message while we're preparing to open again? And then a third message once we're open. Look for opportunities, they're everywhere but you've got to look differently. Think about what do you think, when you look internally, it's what, what else can we do with what we have that the market needs? And every industry is different, every, tar every market is different. And so for each of you, you've got to look at your specific case of that. And how do we do that? So lockdown ends and people start and things open up. Now we're in the sprint phase. Personal, you've got to manage your energy. You've got to manage your clarity and your focus. You've got to have priorities. You've got to stay, you've got to be razor sharp. Be really committed to stay in the course and helping and leading your team through. You've got to own it. You've got to own the, the new reality for your team, because there will still be fears when we get into the sprint phase. There will still be worry. Sprint phase doesn't mean it's done, no one's ever gonna get sick again. It means it's done enough that, that commerce is starting again. But there will still be risks. There will still be things we have to manage. But people have been, will have been, bent, you know, locked up for a while, at home for a while, there is gonna be a pent up demand. You have to be prepared mentally to help your team and your customers and patients do it, survive that. You need to lead from the front. You need to be out ahead. You need to be a calming influence. You need to be a great communicator. Communicate to your team, communicate to your patients, your clients, your customers, your community, your prospects, you need to be really, you need to be out in front. Communication is the number one thing that is important right now. Keeping your calm and communicating effectively every single day. Maximum effort. We're going into a sprint and there's gonna be pent up demand for a lot of our services, so you need to be prepared to deal with that. 
it was the phone ringing off the hook. Dealing with, do I, you know, how do I get more people in? Do I need to open extra hours? Do I need an alternate schedule, short term? Focus on when you reopen, focus on your existing clients. Make sure they keep coming back to you. Make sure you're, you're set up to serve them well. Get your new marketing going so that you can acquire new customers. But always remember, don't, don't sacrifice your current customer for the new customers. And you've got to figure out and test and measure. Pay attention to where your clients, and your new clients and patients are coming from now. They may be coming from a new sort, new place, and they may be coming for a new reason. Find that out. Pay attention. Keep track of that. Because the ways they hear about you might change. We don't know. But we want to know what, what message is working, what medium is working. And then once we get through the sprint, then we're back into the where we were a month ago. Compete and grow. But it's compete and grow possibly with new products and services. For you on the personal side, now you're back to consistency, balance, fun. In leading your company, but possibly the company might be different. And now it's getting back to what I've been working on with all our clients for the last, you know, prior, up until a month ago. Continuous improvement, systems and processes, growth plans. Our Q3 growth club will, will most likely be back to a traditional set set aggressive goals, goals and, and, and grow and improve. This plan, it's get a handle on it. Manage through this quarter. We're doing it a little differently because the world is different. The business world is different. And we have to recognize where we are in these phases. Mark, we have a question. Uh -huh. So the question is, how do we plan for clients that are low on cash or want to begin work with a different financial arrangement? If they're new client, if they're existing clients, um, for you have, I think we have to all accommodate the fact that their reality and their business has changed. And we may need to make some adjustments to contracts, to agreements, so that they can continue to be a customer. Um, I think that uh, we're all going to have to look at, at, at pricing. Um, you know, I've got some clients that are shut down. We're not charging them. But we're still coaching them because we want to help them through this and so that we can get back to growing. But as we go through that sprint and get into that, you know, as I said at the beginning, every business and industry in person is going to go through this and, and go through these phases on a different calendar. And so we, we, we just may have to accommodate for a while that a reduced level of services might be necessary at a reduced rate. But for existing clients, uh, my, my, my advice is bend over backwards to keep them as your client, assuming you want them to continue to be your client. But just the reality is not everybody will come out of this, will get to the sprint at the same time you do. And so they'll, they'll be behind. But there is, there, there is going to be some of that. Okay. Because everybody, every, every business and industry is going to come out of this. You know, the tourism industry, one of my clients, um, I don't think he's on here, David Morgan, um, big time trading, so snorkeling gear. And he relies on people traveling, going on cruises and going to different um, locations in the Caribbean to go snorkeling. Not a lot of cruising going on right now, not a lot, not a lot of vacations. The tourism industry has just about died. His, his sprint may not be till October, November, where some of us 
you know, I have other clients that are in their sprint right now because they're in an industry that have, where demand for their services has gone up as a result of the crisis. So they're in a sprint now. So we're all going to hit that at different points. But yeah, there will, there will have to be some accommodation. Likely, it, it would not be surprising to have to have some accommodation so that people can continue doing business and we have to pick and choose. Normally, I don't like discounting, but we're coming out of a crisis and the crisis for, for your good clients, my, my belief is just you do what it takes to help them. And that pays off in the long, in the long run. Because the other option is you don't have any work to do. Right. But we have to accommodate as best we can. And do what's right for them without hurting ourselves too much. Um, so in that compete and grow, we get back to where, like I said, where we were a month ago. Continuous improvement systems and processes, growth, marketing, opt optimizing our marketing, and creating that, that profitable commercial enterprise that works without you. But we will get there. We just don't know if it's two months or four months. But we will get back to that normal. You know, the key is, and the thing to help help you keep calm, I talked to several business owners this week that are still just nervous about, well, what if, what if, what if? Well, you got to get rid of the what ifs. Um, and you have to, because if this doesn't end, well, we're in a whole new world then. So we should, so we need to go ahead and so in and, and a world we can't possibly prepare for. Because we don't know what that would look like. None, none of us have. No one, no one alive would, knows what that looks like. So not, not worth spending a lot of energy thinking what if. It never comes back. It will. If it doesn't, there will be a whole new set of problems that we'll all have. So you have to plan for that this is. It's a virus. It will be it will be brought under control. We just don't know if it's in two to four weeks or four to six weeks or six to eight weeks. We just don't know that. The economy, as soon as that's under control, the economy will come back. There's nothing broken about the economy. That's what's different about this recession from all the other ones in our lifetimes, is in each of those something broke. Something fundamental about the marketplace stopped functioning properly for a variety of reasons. And things ground to a halt because of that. And we had to fix a lot of the root things to be able to get back to commerce again. This is simply, as soon as people are, are freed up, commerce will start during that warm-up phase. It'll start. People will start going out. It won't be overnight, you know, snap your fingers because <clears throat> there'll be a little bit of time while people get back to work and, and start getting regular paychecks so that they can start spending again. But that will happen much more quickly than every previous recession because the economy's fine, money is available, it's flowing, there's no systemic problems. It will come back. Every industry will come back at a slightly different, at a different pace and schedule, but they will all come back. The other thing you need to think about, and this is during your, your warm-up phase, you know, looking for opportunities. Some markets in our business may not come back fully for a long time, if ever. Some may, some may not come back. So we have to be looking for new opportunities. The biggest thing everybody needs to be looking at, and it's different for every industry again, is online, online video, online communications. Look at how many people are now doing their work virtually. How many companies are, are thinking right now, hmm, this working virtually was easier than we thought. Do I need a million square foot of office space to bring all these people back to? Or 
can I leave half my workforce at home and cut down that 300,000 square feet of office space? You save 50,000 a month in rent. Think you're gonna see more people, more businesses, leaving some or all of their workforce and or service delivery online. If I was in the large business office commercial, I would be a little worried right now that the companies that just are now discovering, hey, we can get a lot of work done from home productively. I was in the IT business, I'd be thinking about, wow, what an opportunity <clears throat> to help these companies get better equipment, better connectivity, more secure communications in place so that their employees can work from home and they can reduce their office overhead. I'd be looking for ways to how can I help my clients keep their employees at home long term? And figuring out what do I need to do to adjust to that? Do I need New training, new equipment, or any techs that can do that. So you, have, you got to look at how is this changing your business and industry, and then how is it changing your customers' business and industry. But a lot of businesses are going to either stay virtual, or at least partially virtual, or leave their virtual arm in place and have both brick and mortar and virtual where they've always been brick and mortar before. Because they found, hey, they can make money online too. So let's take a quick 10 minute break for everybody. 10 minutes, no more. And then we'll start into how we're gonna do our plan. Walk you through the, walk you through the plan documents. So before we do that, we're gonna do what we always do when we break. I want everybody to stand up. Go ahead and stand up in front of your camera. We're gonna do what we call a whoosh. Those of you who've been through this before know what this is. Those of you who yeah, don't, that's okay. We'll do it anyways. So a whoosh is all about letting go of the past, locking in your learnings, and bringing the learnings forward with you, your future. And the way you do it is you put your left hand out in front of you, along with your left foot out in front of you. You put your right hand back with your right hand, shake it, let, shake it all out. Let all the baggage and negative thoughts, let those go. And then on the count of three, we're gonna swing, swing forward. You're gonna kick with your right leg and you're gonna bring your right hand together and you're gonna clap. And you're gonna say whoosh, W-O-O-S-H, whoosh. So on the count of three, we're gonna whoosh. One, two, three, whoosh. 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 All right, we're gonna take a 10 minute break. Welcome back, everybody. So, um, before we jump in, what I want everybody to do is take two minutes and write down your top three things you learned from the from the first session. Top three things you learned. Two minutes. Write them down. Start typing what you learned in your chat box. All right, good job. Keep them coming. Plan, plan, plan. Lots of growth opportunities. Thinking about where your customers are in this time, because they may be in a completely different place than you are. You might be ready to go, but they, they might just be getting back to their jobs and waiting two weeks for, their, for, for the next paycheck. Yeah, stru structure the, that sprint phase is going to surprise a lot of people. So that's one that's really going to be really important so that you can be planned for that and plan to take advantage of new opportunities for creativity. A lot of great learnings. Awesome. Keep typing them in. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump back into the presentation. So for that last point, all throughout these phases, constant communication, 
with your staff, with suppliers, with existing customers and prospects. Let them know. Let them, things they want to know is, they want to know that you're safe, they want to know what you're doing so that your employees are safe. They're going to want, want to know what you're doing to make it safe to do business with you. Those are the three areas they're always going to be looking at. You communicate, communicate, communicate. One of the things that when you get into that sprint phase, people are going to want more products and services, but they're still going to be hesitant. So you have to help them be confident that it's safe to do business with you and that they don't need to hesitate with you. That may be part of your marketing prep is, hey, when we open, here's the new protocols we'll have in place, make it safe for you to start coming back in again. All right, so let's talk about what your business looks like. Your business is, has six pillars to every business. Sales, marketing, finance operations, your products and services, and your team. And as part of planning, we need to look at each one of those areas during this crisis and what do we need to do differently? What do we need to stop doing? What do we need to start doing? What do we need to do differently in each of these areas, depending on what phase we're in? But these are the pillars for your business. Now down at the bottom, that's you. That's your foundation. So you always need to be, even in the whether it's crisis or no crisis, you always need to be working on you, your leadership skills, building your leadership team, leading using your vision, your mission, and your core values, building that company culture of success. And that's how we build your business by working on each of these pillars, and we can make it bigger or smaller, but no matter what phase we're in, these are, these are the areas we've got to think about and plan for. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take some time now, and we won't, probably won't finish this by 10.30, I can go to 11, but if people need to jump off at 10.30, that's fine. Um, you, Liz emailed out worksheets to everybody this morning. So you've got the worksheets to do this, and we're going to go through those here in a minute. But what we're going to do is we're going to set goals in each of the six pillars, potentially for each of the five phases. If you're already past the phase in yours, you can skip that one. But if you're still in lockdown, you need to be thinking about, do I have any additional lockdown activities to go? Or I'm in, am I in an industry that is still possibly might be locked down? Well, maybe I need to have some things in there to do that. Those of you who've been to multiple growth clubs before know that I'm pretty militant about what a goal is and what a goal isn't. Well, we're not in growth mode. We are in crisis mode. So your goals might be just your key action items that you have to take. And Liz, Liz, like Liz just put in the chat, if anybody didn't get the worksheets, please email her and she'll get them to you. It's Liz McNulty at actioncoach.com. She, we think we got everybody, but if you didn't get the worksheets last night or this morning, just email her and she'll get them to you right away. So we need to be thinking about what we're doing in each of the areas. So during a crisis, our time frame is very, of, of activity and of thought is very compressed. So what might, so what might be necessary is, so these might all be strategies and action and, and tasks to do. And because we're in a crisis and we need to focus on very short term recovery and planning, that's okay because our time frame is crunched. Q3, when we're back to normal growth, we'll get back to setting bigger, more specific, smart goals that are perfectly formed. Um, but right now, it's if we could just identify, here's all the things I need to do in the order I need to do them and get started doing them, 
That's what every one of us needs to do in our business right now because we're in a crisis. So, uh, so for those of you who have seen me preach differently before, this is adapting to the reality of we are in a short-term crisis. We need to do things differently. It's not sitting back and thinking, hmm, what do I want my sales, what do I want my sales goal, my sales goal to be this quarter? I want to have sales this quarter. So you might have a sales goal, but don't worry about the goals being too perfect. I'm not going to. Really what we want to do is create a plan of action for the next 90 days to get us through this and get us either into our sprint phase or ready for it because it'll be, if it's not there, it'll be really, it's, it's coming. A goal is whatever you need to do to get through that phase. This is what the sheets look like. So in sales, phase one, lockdown. If you are in there currently, do you have any further work to do to shut down your business, to lock you down? What are your training goals? What are, so training goals might be for sales, might be, you know, reread, re, re and some of my clients are doing this now, reread that great training book, that great selling book, Action Selling, that I've given many of you. Go read, reread Action Selling and, and think about how do I need to adapt my sales process to the, econ to the new economy, the new reality? Do I need to talk to my sales team about a different approach for sales? It might tie into how are you doing differently in marketing? Book I'm referring to is a book called Action Selling by Dwayne Sparks. You know, it's got the word action, action in it. It's not related to Action Coach. It's by Dwayne Sparks. An awesome, simple book on selling. And really, it's how not to, how to get sales without selling. So, great book. Um, it talks about a lot of the things that were covered, concepts in Action Club when you talk about sales. So in the training mode, you might be in sales, you might be doing that. So in the warming up phase in sales, let's talk about sales. What are some sales goals in the training and warm up phase? What, what, what are some things you'd want to, you want to do during that? Have more meetings for me. What kind of meetings? Sales meetings, opportunities to look at new jobs, kitchens, okay. bathrooms, additions, that kind of thing. All right. What else? I know for me, it'll be sending out emails to group events that I've had in the summer's past and trying to return, get their return um, visits for this coming okay. summer. Past, past clients that, hey, it's, Time to come back, just like you were last year. All the birthday parties from last year, right? Yeah, and or looking for new groups that might come now because things have changed. Right. Okay. Um, I was thinking about as a, you know, we, we do a lot of different uh, design work for institutions, but also private residential work. And while some of the families that I've called on and worked with have really fallen on financially hard times. There are other people that are thriving, such as physicians, caregivers. So their, their increase in ability to work and to and make improvements to their home and what I would consider to be their compounds <laughs> um, is great. So I was thinking about trying to put a marketing piece together to <laughs> into everyone that I know that are physicians or people in, the, in a place of care or where their businesses have um, increased. Um, not not in a stocky kind of way, but uh, in a, and not yet, but like in that warming up phase, you know, trying to find ways to reach people that might want and have the ability to make improvements um, to their homes or to their businesses or whatever it is that applies. Awesome. And in this, you know, and this is sales and marketing. I have those one and two. As, as a lot of you know, you know, sales activities, marketing activities kind of blend together. 
um, for a lot of our businesses, especially in the service businesses. Um, but selling is marketing, marketing is selling. So um, yeah, so it's while you're in this, it's approaching them differently, you know, with a different sales message, with a different sale, with a different opportunity to be helped, right? Because we don't want to, you know, my clients know, I don't, you know, I don't want to sell, I don't like to sell to people. I like to help people and I like to teach them how I help so that they can choose to be helped by me. Um, three of so, the, uh, three of the strategies we're trying to implement right now are company evaluation dollars. So talking to business owners about their company evaluation number, because that has dropped significantly in the marketplace and how do owners start putting those dollars back on the bottom line of their business. Number two is employee wellness and how do they assist their employees during this time. Uh, and number three are the regulations and compliances that are going to be modified based upon employees returning to the workplace. So all of our marketing material and meetings have been derived around those three pain points, trying to uh, educate uh, and create a strategy for business owners uh, right now when they're on lockdown. So any other thoughts on, you know, sales goals, activities, tasks that you should be doing? Mine's just doing more teledocking and learning how to communicate to patients through video. You know, it's totally new for me. I've never done this before. But that way it's still keeping me in contact with my patients. And if they need something, you know, I can try and walk them through whatever's going on with them to get them to a point that they're comfortable and then when we reopen you know i can start taking care of them again but at least know, let them know that i'm still available to them go ahead phil uh one thing for me is uh, kind of a securing a commitment of when would be a good time to work together for example uh the market might be scary right now when does the market look less scary do we want to wait until the market returns to its peak or do we want to get in sometime before then This is Bob. Um, one of the things that resonates for me a whole lot goes back to what you were saying earlier, uh, the importance, particularly at this stage, of uh, communicating with my constituents. Uh, and by that, I mean my suppliers, referral sources, customer base, um, staying in as constant communication as I can with them, uh, and minimally, minimally just making them aware that I'm still very much in business still and in a position to provide services, et cetera. And, and, and possibly a completely different, different message to listen for than, you know, so you, you can, you know, what, what people might have been looking for two months ago that you could serve, they might have a different problem statement or situation. So it, it's maybe re-educating, hey, people, used to be people in this situation were a good fit for me, but right now in this crisis, people in this new situation are a good fit for me. So Makes maybe, sense. Maybe a different, you know, different, you know, so a different way. So referral partners, you know, I'm not telling my referral partners, hey, who's who's looking to grow? I'm asking my tell my referral partners, hey, who do you see that's struggling to work their way through this and, and figure out how to survive it? I can help them do that. <laughs> will grow on the other end of it. But right now, that's not what they're, they're not talking about growing right now. I'm, you know, only maybe 20% of the businesses on the planet are talking about growing right now. And they're all provide, they're all basically providing um, logistics, infrastructure, um, delivery services, and, you know, healthcare products, healthcare and food products, right? Just essential products. Um, everybody else, is not in a growth mode and is in a, you know, either a survive or stabilize mode. So, all right, this is, so, go ahead, Laura. I, this is, I'm sorry. Um, one of the things that I did uh, probably about um, a, not quite a week ago is that I grabbed a lot of information about, because uh, I, I mentioned early in the call that I had clients in 2019 that were just, those clients that I had projects, small projects, handbooks, HR audits that have, have fallen off, they're, they're, but they're still my clients. And so what I did was I pulled together the family first um, document 
and the um, comprehensive FAQs on everything that's going on um, and what workers, workplaces and employers need to be knowing and seeing. And so I put that together and I sent it out to each of the clients that I had in 2019 and the ones that I have in 2020. And so, um, because I wanted to present myself, I mean, I, I've had 30 years of HR experience in both healthcare and non-healthcare, profit, for-profit, non-profit. And so I wanted to present them again, just remind them that I'm here, I'm, I'm current and I can help you if you want to help, you know, have, call me or ask me questions. And, and I, I think that probably my goal needs to be not to give everything away. <laughs> And I, I'm so at this point, I want to help everybody. I don't, I mean, and I, although I, I want to make money, um, I want them all to survive. At one of my, um, <laughs> I, I work with a chiropractor and my insurance didn't cover her office. So we made a deal. I would provide HR services to her if she would provide chiropractic services to me. So I was going back to the day of bartering. And um, so I helped her navigate through closing down her office for this time being. So th those are things that I'm doing. I'm just, my, my goal is not to give it all away. So anyway. All right, thank you. What I want you to work on now is I want you to take first page of your three page planning sheets that Liz sent you, our sales, and marketing. So I want you to look through those five phases and I'll put the five phases back up on the screen here and think about what goals, what, what, what actions, what goals, what tasks, what strategies do you need to work on in sales and marketing in those phases. There might not be anything in one phase, there might be something in the other. But over the next 90 days, where do you believe you'll need to focus your time? So I'm going to give you 10 minutes to come up, come up with some actions in those areas. This is the form you should be using. Liz sent this document out this morning at 7.30 with the reminder. So this is the, this is the one. The other, the other document is going to be for detailing out plans in more detail after we get this part done. Sales and marketing only right now. Sales and marketing only. Just work on those. You're done. Go ahead and type into the chat box your top two or three goals, activities, plans for the next 90 days in sales and marketing. Go ahead and start sharing. You don't need to have five different goals for each of the areas. You may only have one or two goals, but I want you thinking about what phase makes sense for you to be, to be working in in sales and marketing. And now is not the time to be just disconnected from people. Just your message might need to be different. And then what is it you have to sell them? What, what's the marketing message? Online gift cards, absolutely. Communicate regularly. And think about what, what, what's the message today? What will need, you know, and what's the, while we're in lockdown and training mode, what's the message for our marketing? And now what do we shift to when we start warming up? And then what do we shift to again when we hit the sprint? You don't know exactly when these days are going to happen, but know what you need to do. You need to have a, you need to have a phase two message, a, phase, a, a potentially different phase three message, and a potentially different phase four message. So you might not be locked down, but your, but your clients might be. So help them have that sense of, of safety to continue working. All right, so you can keep typing them in, but um, so now it's looking at finance. And what do you, you know, many of us have already done some finance things for the short term, but 
what else do we need to be doing? Do we need to be looking at our credit lines? Do we need to be talking to our bankers, our landlords, other people that um, we, we owe money to or that are expecting us to pay for something? Do we need to put discretionary spending on hold? Do we need to ramp up spending in somewhere else? Um, you know, what is it we need to, you know, how do we, whoops. You know, what is it we need to be doing? So during, you know, when we're going from in the warming up phase, what do we need to be looking at with our, with our money? Um, again, talking to our, our creditors, talking to our customers that owe us money. And you may, you know, the terms you had them on, you know, depending on their size and the, you know, the impact on their business and their, on their finances, it might be talking to them about, you know, getting paid. How are we getting paid? It might be offering, if, if you know they've got money, they're just hoarding it. It might be just simply making them an offer to pay now, you know, 5% discount to, to settle your bill today um, versus pay it off, you know, on the original terms. Um, you know, give them, give them opportunities to pay you and then it's conserved cash. What are we doing to conserve cash so that when we get to the warm up phase, we have some to spend on marketing and getting, getting ready to getting ready to sprint. And then what kind of resource financial resources do we need for the sprint? You know, are we applying for the, the SB, the SBA loans that are out there, the disaster relief loans, you know, what are we doing? What are we looking at? How are we educating in the training section for finance is, is listening to the webinars put on by the SBA virtually every day um, to, to learn about it. Talking to our financial advisors, whether it's our stock, you know, our, our it's, you know, financial planner or our CPA for our business or our coach or who are we talking to to make sure that we've got a financial plan that gets us through so that we can get back to compete and grow as quickly as possible in as good a financial shape as we can. And then operations. You know, what do we need? You know, what are our goals for our operations? How, how are we, is it, you know, what else do we need to do for virtual? Do we need to move further to virtual? Um, or are there, do we need to plan for virtual being an offering that we offer for six months or for forever? Um, what other parts of our operations need to adjust for the new short-term reality? And then do we, and then what do we know about our, or what do we believe about our long-term reality? You know, because some of it's gonna get back to the old normal, some of it's gonna move to a new normal. So we thinking about, do I have a new normal that I need to be looking at my operations and how I do that, how I deliver products and services that way permanently? Or do we expect it to go back? Some industries will just go back to the way it was. If you're in the construction industry, you're not going to be delivering, you're not going to be building buildings, you know, grading lots, you're not, you know, excavating, you're not going to be doing that virtually. So that won't change. But other industries, there will be some virtual products and services that might stick around, might be an additive. So what do you need to change operationally? To be ready to do that in a non-crisis situation. So let's take let's take 15 minutes to 15 10 15. I'll give you 15 minutes to work on that, and so you can finish up any sales and marketing. As you finish things up, put them in the chat box so we can see. If you have questions, put them in the chat box as well. Um, so let's work on finance and not move from sales and marketing into finance and operations. And what are the act? What are the key activities? And, and goals we want to give ourselves in finance and operations over the next 90 days while we get from our current phase of the crisis to moving into some of us will be sprinting 90 days from now some of us will be just still preparing will be in warming up phase some of us will be in growth phase again right? because our industry is not really not shut down at all to slow down a little bit, but 90 days, we might be back full bore faster than ever beyond the sprint, just back into our busy season.
you know, put this screen up for everybody. And it's page two of that PDF, finance and operations. You think about, do I have anything to do in, in each of the five phases? You may not. If you're past lockdown, then doesn't, don't need to worry about that one. You're in the warming up, focus there. What you might be doing warming up and sprint in the next 90 days. So think about where you're at. That's the most likely phases that most of us will go through in the next 90 days is the warming up and the sprint. We won't likely get to phase five in very many industries in the next 90 days. That'll be a Q3 thing. And some of us will still have training. Most of us are through our lockdown phase, but think about is there anything additional you need to lock down? We've got several people typing, thank you. Mark, do you wanna address Phil's question? I'm reading it here. Okay. For small businesses, does it make sense to lessen marketing activities during the sprint to focus on sales and operations? Um, possibly, you may need to, so if, if in your sprint you're getting busier, you know, so right, right now you might be thinking about, so I don't ever want you to, to stop your marketing. Um, what up too much, but in your case, you know, you're, net, you know, you're, net, you're marketing a lot of it's networking, though, right? So um, you do, you might need to adjust your calendar a little bit to deal with business, um, but you never slow it down a little bit, but you gotta be really strategic about that because um, we never want to, you know, when we rely on heavily on referrals, we never want to stop being in front of people, but you may need to adjust to, to the reality of it because if you're bringing on more clients and it takes more time, um, you'll need to prioritize and there may be a period of time during the sprint where you can't go to, maybe it's, maybe it's you only go to the more strategic ones and you schedule fewer, fewer coffees with new people for a few weeks so that you can get to clients and your prospect in your pipeline and, and get them. So yeah, it's a, when you don't have a lot of people to delegate to, you've got to, you gotta make and there And there's probably trade-offs. Todd, you brought up a very good point. There's a whole lot of talent on the market right now. So if you are looking for people, there's a lot of good people available. Some great ideas, improve, improve our operations so that we can work virtually more in the future and, and more productively and effectively while we're, you know, perfect that now. That might, you know, that's, that may be the way of the future for a lot of you. Upgrade your own technology and when you come out of the warming up, you start getting cash flow again. Maybe it's time to upgrade your technology to, to be able to be a provider and, and do more virtual networking, more virtual service providing. In that warm up phase, tons of communication with your team. Yeah. Get, you know, while you're preparing mentally for it, are you preparing your team mentally for it? You gotta make, make sure that they're ready. They're ready for the busy seat. Um, for some of us, this is just an extended winter and the, and the summer season's coming and we're not gonna get much of a spring. We're gonna jump straight from winter to winter behavior to summer behavior. And do we have everything ready to do that? Interns are a great idea and depending on whether they're getting credit for school or not, you know, some of them are doing it for school credit um, every, you know, everybody's got, everybody has a different, different plan for how they do interns. Um, but interns are a good idea. You know, one of the things on interns, if you're not going to pay them, you've got to be reasonable in how many hours you're asking them to work because a lot of them will have to have another job outside of that. Good point, Sandy. Thank you. If it's part of a school intern program, it's going to be, fairly well defined what the expectations are. 
But if you're just thinking of hiring, hiring kids for the summer, pay them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think having extended hours in the sprint is a really good idea if you can manage that to deal with your backlog. All right, so I'm gonna to go to the next two steps. It is 1030, so if anybody has to sign off, I, I apologize, uh, we knew we were, we were doing it completely new and different this time because of we're in a different situation. So um, I think we're gonna to go to 11. And um, so if you're able to stay with us, stay with us. If not, I will uh, follow up with you um, later today or Monday and uh, to help you finish your plan. So if you have to go, I apologize. So now it's products and services. Again, do we, what do we need to change about our products and services, about the delivery of our products and services? Are there new services we need to, or products we need to add? Are there ones that don't make sense to sell right now until we get back to normal? Um, and think about in the different phases, what, what do we do? What do, you know, right now you should be identifying if you haven't already, you know, what, what different about your pro different or additional about your products and services. Maybe you're featuring different ones now than before. Um, and so there might be, you know, a different, a different service that the product that people are more likely to buy now than they were before. And when we go into sprint and then phase five, when we get back to that new normal, um, it, it may shift again. So what's the shift? What are people buying? What do they need? Think about from there. It's always think about it from their perspective. It's like sales and marketing, right? Think about it from their perspective. What do they need that you can meet with a product or service? And then team. What do you need to do for your team? What does your team need from you? Other than in addition to just being a great leader in communication. Is it, you know, do, do your communications plans have to change? You know, are you, are you taking advantage of the downtime for some training? What are you doing to get them ready to, during the warm up phase for the sprint? Will you need to adjust schedules? Will you need to have different hours than you used to have to get caught up on the backlog? Or will you need to have short hours because your, your industry is gonna maybe wanna restart slowly? And how do you mix in customers, patients that you had to cancel and put off and move them forward. The other thing that you need to be prepared for is if people are not working right now, they may have sought other opportunities. So stay in touch with your team so you know who will be available when you do need to hit the sprint phase. And that may be, you know, going back to sales, you know, that may be during the lockdown and training phases, it's, it's letting your team know when you'll have them back. You know, keep, that's why keeping in communication with the team is so important throughout all these phases because they may be getting temp stuff, but let them know their job is, is coming back. Here's what it looks like. Here's where, here's when we start and help them prepare. It really is important that you're checking in with your teams and Ask how they're doing, are they okay? And then tell them what you're doing. That communication is critical right now. They're looking to you for your leadership and your positive outlook. So let's take about 10 minutes to go over to put together your ideas, goals, plans, action items, tasks for service and products, services and products and for team for the next 90 days. When you're done, same thing, start typing them in the chat box. Good, Leslie, you know, keep, you know you, your workforce is that, uh, you know, that somewhat immature teenagers. So helping them get their heads back on straight and remembering, you know, what, what the culture is, what the rules of the game are, um, so that they can come back and have their heads in the game to continue to make it safe. And during the, you know, during those phase one and phase two with team, it's, you know, communicating is important, but communicating in a fun way. Um, you know, have, you know, 
share share funny things. You know, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing to keep yourself from going nuts at home? You know, uh, you know, have have contests for the craziest, you know, for different ideas. Um, but make it fun to participate in team conversations and team as you're going. Yeah, this is a great time to get CEUs in. Yeah. Wacky Wednesdays. Wackiest thing happening at work or their funniest joke or wackiest thing happening at home. Uh, great idea. You know, keep it fun. Keep, keep, keep your team engaged in fun ways. Those of you have team. Help them be, help them be comfortable and keeping the mindset of, hey, we're coming out of this. Great idea, Josh. Create a lessons learned yeah. series out of out of this because a lot of the lessons we're learning during this and adjustments maybe think we need to think about in our businesses from now on. We may need to be, you know, just a reminder that hey, we always need to be looking at how can we extend our products and services. Who else can we help? What other ways can we deliver? These are all things we, you know, we should have been doing all along. But maybe we weren't getting to, and the crisis forced us to address them. So there's going to be a ton of lessons learned that apply going forward. And putting on a series, that, that, that's a great idea, Josh. I'm going to steal it. Thank you. And earlier, I think it was Sarah Beth that mentioned that they've become very adept at using an app that they had just kind of had on the shelf. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for you to share knowledge. Get that information out there with other people in your industry. All right, so um, I'm gonna move us on to the next slide here. Just So the second document that Liz sent out was what we call a smart goal planning sheet. And we're gonna, for those of you who been through this before, we're going to use it a little differently. Um, because we've identified more than just, just, just two or three goals to work on. So what I want you to do is, is fill out one of these for each of those six areas. And maybe a seventh one for that foundation piece, which is you, your leadership, in your vision and mission and culture and core values work. And plan out all the steps you're going to do from this down in the bottom section where specific action steps for achieving this goal. So up, up in the top, you can put your the goals you came up with in the different phases in the different areas. Fill out the possible obstacles to, to getting there and then identify the list out the strategies and then put some in, put the action steps you're going to do down at the bottom and fill that in so you should have at least six i'd recommend a seventh for you and your leadership and what you're doing to be a better you a better leader more focused and being the foundation of your of your business of your practice. Any, if anybody has problems with that, then um, just let me know. So um, for all clients, you know that you'll, you know, we're going to review these, we'll go over these. And um, for those of you who are not clients, um, Liz or I will be reaching out to you and um, setting up an hour to uh, that we can meet to go over your plan and uh, answer any specific questions you have and help make sure you've got a great plan um, to get through this and come out the other side into the sprint and, and be ready for, for getting back to the, uh, you know, really it's not getting back to normal, it's move, moving forward to the new normal because some things will just be different permanently and that's okay. Um, but um, so everybody's not a client, we'll be reaching, Liz, Liz or I will be reaching out to schedule an hour video comp, video call it is just go over what, what you came up with and um, help you through anything and just brainstorm and uh, uh, come up with how to do the plan so um, 
what I want everybody to do now is take, um, let me give you five minutes to come up with the top, your top five learnings or takeaways from today. So write them out on a piece of paper, your top five learnings. And when you're done, type them into the chat. Very good one, Sarah. Small business is personal. So you, when planning, you have to think about both the personal and the business side of it. The small business is very personal. And always be looking for and participating in new ways. These are all opportunities. So awesome. Thank you. Make sure we stay focused on current clients so we can keep them on while we're looking for new clients. We can't forget our current clients. And sometimes we have to just focus on current, depending on the industry we're in. Planning and executing in, a, in the crisis is, is different. We have to focus on different things, but we still have to plan. We just narrow our, our focus is just a lot more short term because the short term we have to do very different activities that will help us and our client base and our prospects and our patients get to move forward to the new normal because we're not going back to the old normal we're going to go to a new normal that'll have a lot of the old normal with it but some new opportunities and and wrinkles in it all right so good job everybody so um any last questions? I'll, I'll let me open up the unmute everybody and open up the floor. And for those of us that have that have been through this before, we're just going to tweak how we use those those planning sheets a little bit um, because we just we I want a really a real dedicated focus one per one page per area sales per pillar one one page for sales one page for marketing. Um, I know, I know we can adapt, right, Chris? Yes. And then for those of you that it's new, uh, like I said, Liz or I will be contacting you to schedule a time, schedule an hour to sit down and video and go over it and make sure that um, you have everything you need so that you can have an awesome, awesome um, quarter where we move into our warm-up phase and then either, depending on our industry, either you know, well prepared for the sprint or sprinting. I'm going to stay on here for a little while. If anybody wants to hang around and chat for a little bit, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stay on. Um, and um, like I said, you can unmute yourself and, and ask questions or type them in the chat box, um, whatever you want to do. But appreciate everybody coming out and um, look forward to uh, chatting with each of you. Um, next week to go over your plans.